Let's talk some more specifics about the formation. We've seen a 4-2-1-3. We've seen a 4-1-2-3. The two constants so far in that regard have been the four in the back, the three up top. Then the end of the year, you went back to a much more conventional 4-4-2. So it begs the question, what is your preferred tactical formation right now for this team? Well, I, um, to be honest, I don't have a preferred system. You know, it's not that I'm a 4-3-3 fanatic and talk only about Barcelona. We love to watch Barcelona, all of us. <laughs> we do. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, if it's a 4-4-2 that kind of reflects all the strengths of this team, then it, let it be a 4-4-2. If it's a diamond with a 4-4-2 or flat 4, if it's a 4-2-3-1, whatever formation it is, it has to kind of work all together. You know, it has to give, give the players a chance to show their strengths you know, and certain elements, you know, have to cover their weaknesses. So you constantly work on that, that puzzle. So I'm not a fanatic for one specific system, but I want the team to understand that they're all on the same page. Mm -hmm. You know, they have to go forward all together and they have to go backwards all together, which is a very difficult process for our strikers. You know, Josie Altidore, or Juan Agudelo or, or Edson Buttle, they have to learn to go backwards the moment we lose the ball. They've got to be behind the ball. You know, I mean, you can give them many examples how now a Messi or a Xavi and Yesta kind of turn around and chase the ball back. Yeah, that looks kind of automatic. automatic. Yes. It looks nice. And everybody talks about a Barcelona that, you know, is absolutely the benchmark in global football right now. But nobody talks about the effort they put in there. They run everybody into the ground. So they run more than any other team. So it's not only the technical side of the game, it's the physical side of the game. They are there, they are there for each other throughout the whole game. You know, one guy makes a mistake, the other guy comes in and cleans it up for him. So that means, you know, the chemistry of a team is extremely important. You know, you can show that on examples. Messi is not the same Messi with Argentina than he is with Barcelona. Because in Barcelona, all the pieces work together. In Argentina, they don't. So suddenly, a Messi is kind of lost there. And so it's with many other players. So we are working on, on, on a group of, of uh, players, an extended group of players, that uh, um, have to buy into the whole concept that you're just one piece of the puzzle. Mm. You know, and you've got to do that job for that team. And maybe eventually down the road, it was one guy, maybe one diva that we may, might have, you know, and says, you know, I, I, I want to do it my way. He will be gone. You know, he won't fit into the Brazil roster and hopefully after <laughs> successful <laughs> qualification. <laughs> Um, so it's all those, those little elements. So I'm not a fanatic for one system. You know, I'm not a fanatic for the Ajax school, which I admire. I'm not a fanatic for Barcelona, which I also admire. I'm, I'm trying to do what is best for that team. Now, the reason why we often in beginnings played with one striker was because both strikers were not fit enough to go 90 minutes. As simple as that. So I knew that, you know, one is running out of gas and I can bring the next one in because if I start both right away, it kind of you know, makes, yeah, limits my options in the second half to change things. So towards, after four or five months in our process, then you know, we got to a point where both in that case now, Josie Altido and Edson Buttle were had far more energy, far more drive. They understood our game. They knew how to chase people also. And suddenly you know, they were able to implement it, but still not for 90 minutes. Mm. Uh, so it's a, it's a working pro process.